All right, so now we're going to start really getting into the meat of macroeconomics. In order to begin to understand how the leaders of a society manage the economy, you have to understand the three main goals that they are working toward. And I call them the three penultimate goals of macroeconomics. Now, I don't know if you know what the word penultimate means, but penultimate is basically a word that means not the ultimate goal, that's the last goal. The penultimate goal is the goal right before that. It's the goal that leads to the final goal of succeeding, okay? So here's what I mean. The ultimate goal, the final, what we are going for in macroeconomics, the ultimate goal of macroeconomics is to maximize aggregate utility. That is what we want. We want there to be as much enjoyment and satisfaction and happiness in society as possible. This is our ultimate goal in society. Now, this is a very abstract concept, and it is difficult to measure aggregate utility. We can't just walk around and say to people, hey, how happy are you? How satisfied are you? And so it's difficult for leaders of society to know how to make aggregate utility a larger number, okay? And so what we do is we have a set of goals before the ultimate goal. These are goals that the leaders of society can work toward and what they believe is if they achieve these penultimate goals, that that automatically leads on to the ultimate goal of aggregate utility. So if we succeed in the penultimate goals, we assume that we are succeeding in the ultimate goal of maximizing aggregate utility. Now, these three penultimate goals, so what we'll put here is, there's the ultimate goal, and then we have the penultimate goals of macroeconomics. Like I said, the penultimate goals ultimately lead to the ultimate goal. Now, the three penultimate goals of macroeconomics are, one, full employment. Now, we're not going to talk about these in, in, in detail right now. I just want to tell you what they are. The leaders in society believe that if we achieve full employment in the economy, that that will lead to maximizing aggregate utility. The second penultimate goal is called price level stability. And the third penultimate goal is called economic growth. And so what the leaders of society believe is this, is we can get distracted by all of the economic things that we're trying to achieve. But if we focus most of our energy just on these three things, those other things are not as, not that they're not as important, it's just that all those other things sort of fall under these three things. So if we take care of these three things, chances are we're going to have a better result of maximizing aggregate utility. Now here's one of the problems, is that these three penultimate goals, full employment, what does that mean? Price level stability? What does that mean? Economic growth. I kind of think I know what that could mean, but I still don't even know. How would I know if I saw economic growth that it is, in fact, economic growth? These three penultimate goals are also very abstract concepts, just like 
maximizing aggregate utility is an abstract concept. But here's the cool thing. We have figured out how to create indicators, concrete indicators for each one of these penultimate goals. And so we can mathematically measure full employment using an econo what we call an economic indicator. We can measure price level stability in an economy using an economic indicator. And we can measure economic growth in an economy using an economic indicator. So you see, each one of these goals has its own economic indicator. An economic indicator is a concrete mathematical calculation that shows whether we are achieving the goal that it's assigned to. Okay, and so I'm going to write the economic indicators right here. I'm going to write economic indicator. All right, so the economic indicator for full employment that we calculate, for example, in the United States, we try to, we do our best to calculate this one particular mathematical indicator and that mathematical indicator tells us how well we are doing at achieving full employment. And it is called the unemployment rate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a separate lesson for each one of these, uh, each one of these penultimate goals. And in each one of those lessons for each one of these goals, I'm going to go over the economic indicator and how you can learn how to calculate the econom that economic indicator. Okay? All right. In fact, in this lesson, we're going to focus on full employment. Price level stability, the economic indicator, is called the inflation rate. The inflation rate. And then the economic indicator for economic growth is based on the calculation for what is called real GDP. It's actually a, a real GDP rate, but first I'm going to help you understand real GDP, and then I'm going to show you how to calculate whether real GDP is increasing or decreasing. And we'll talk more about real GDP when we do the lesson on economic growth. Okay. And so what we're about to embark on over the next several lessons, for the next two to three weeks, we are going to try and understand these three penultimate goals of macroeconomics and their economic indicators.